let's say you and I wrote two different algorithms. All right, here's your awesome algorithm, and I'm hiding away the details there. Here's my awesome algorithm. We're hiding away the details as well. And both of our algorithms accomplish the same goal. It doesn't matter what that goal is. In this case, we just want to talk about which algorithm is most efficient. Right? We're having a programming contest. Whose algorithm is going to win if we run our algorithms against each other? Now, in a programming contest, we could submit our code. We could execute our code. We could see whose code runs the fastest on the given data set. But in a programming contest, chances are the data set isn't going to be that huge. But more often than not, we're worried about whose algorithm can complete the soonest with a large data set. Call oh, everything's generating data, isn't it? I mean, you go on Facebook, you sneeze at Facebook, and you create a bunch of data. That data you don't even realize you're creating and Facebook is tracking. You don't necessarily have to comment or like anything. Just open Facebook and there's tracking your data right there. Very common with any website to track all that data and store that data. Huge data sets. Think of all the weather systems that are out there. Think of all the mobile devices that are out there. All those things generating data. We need to save that data, run some analysis on it. And if your algorithm can't crank out a result in a reasonable amount of time, then your algorithm's useless. All right. So anyway, I digress. Look. Here's our two algorithms. We want to compare these two. We could race these algorithms in a programming contest, or we could do an analysis, and that's what we're going to do right here. Uh, we do the analysis, like you saw in a previous video, and let's say your algorithm came out to 3n squared plus 8n plus 9. And how we got that, we don't really care. It's the function we're worried about, right? If you want to see how we could come up with something like that, Look at this previous video in the playlist. Go watch that video. It'll take you there. All right, we do the same with my algorithm. We find out that my algorithm is 100n squared plus 4. Now, just looking at these two functions, which one of these algorithms do we want to use in the long run? As n gets really big, right, n approaches infinity, meaning huge data set here. As n gets really big, which one of these algorithms do we want to choose? Pause the video and tell me in the comments, which algorithm do we want to use? Do we want to use yours, because you're awesome? Or do we want to use mine, because I'm awesome? Who's awesomer? <laughs> Pause the video, put it in the comments. If people have commented before you, cross your eyes, blur it out, don't look at their comments, drop your comment. Well, if you're new to this, I hope you're kind of torn. All right, we have three n squared, and this 3 is smaller than 100, but then this function down here doesn't have the 8n hanging out. So it's like, okay, do we want the 100n squared? We, we pay a bigger cost here, but then we don't have this 8n adding. And, and here we have a smaller cost, but... Uh, let me show you how we can compare this mathematically. We write them as ratios, meaning as a fraction, plus 9 over 100 and squared plus 4. And it doesn't matter if my function's on the top or your function's on the top. I'll, I'll explain that in a bit. And, and now we just got to figure out, okay, as n gets really big, we'll say n approaches infinity, even though that doesn't really look like an infinity. That's an infinity sign. <laughs> as n approaches infinity, uh, which one of these functions is going to dominate? We call this a limit in calculus. And don't let that calculus word scare you. All you need to understand here is n's growing really big. Let me see if I can do a better infinity. n's growing to infinity, and who's going to dominate? Well, I just can't really eyeball this and say who's going to win unless I've done a bunch of these in calculus, which I have, so I could tell you flat out. But let me give you something better than me just telling you. Uh, I can mathematically split this up, can I? Isn't it legal to say, okay, 3n squared over 100n squared plus 4? plus, that's this plus right here, plus 8n over the same denominator. It's totally legal math. My algebra teacher told me I could do this. And teachers know everything, and so do people on YouTube. 9 over 100, n squared plus 4. And I'm going to start right and work our way left. And just look at what's going to happen to each one of these as, as n gets really big. Okay, well, look at this. I have a constant over something that's growing, right? So let's say n is 100. 
Well, then that would be 9 divided by 100 times 100 times 100 is, oh, that's a lot of zeros, isn't it? Let's see. Oh, 1 million. There we go. 1 million plus 4. Well, if, <laughs> sorry, I think this is funny. Uh, let's say N was the number of miles you run, and for every mile you ran, I'd give you $100 times that mile squared. We saw this with the race car example I did in a previous video. Uh, we don't really care about the four. The four is not adding anything. What, what's adding value here is the N's growing, the N's getting bigger. So I'm not even going to worry about the four. I'm going to cross the four off here. Uh, and then I got nine divided by a huge number. Well, that's going to be a really small number. All right. And as this number gets bigger and bigger and bigger, which it is, the entire result here is going to approach zero. All right. Nine divided by a huge number. Nine divided by infinity is almost zero. It approaches zero, but it's not zero. Yeah, anyway. So oh, this is zero. We're going to just erase all that. Chump change, not worth our time. Okay. And then, oh, I erased my four there. 8n over n squared plus four. Well, I already told you that the n squared here is going to dominate. So I don't even care about these plus fours anymore. Useless plus four is going to get rid of them. And then, oh, look, 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 look. I have an n squared there. So I'm going to erase that squared part there. And I can write n squared as n times n because that's the same thing as n squared. Ooh, I can cancel these out. Ooh, feeling good. And then I have pretty much the same scenario we just had with that previous term, 9 over 100 n squared. I got 8 over something that grows really big. All right, here's our n. n will grow big. 8 was able to hold on a little bit longer. It had its buddy there, n there. It was like, n, please save me. And then it's like, I'll save you 8. I'll save you 8. Uh, but then this end that we had right there canceled out that end, and the eight's like, N, you failed me. No! And the eight's looking at this end down here. We have one end left there in the denominator, and the eight's like, oh, no! Ah! Here comes an end. It's going to beat me up, and guess what's going to happen to this whole thing? It's going to approach zero as well. Useless term. Useless term. So I just showed you that when I write these two over each other, useless, useless, useless oh look again we're looking at the highest order term here the n squared well hmm it's the n squared these cancel don't they they cancel what am i left with if i don't erase it i'm left with three over a hundred okay and what does three over a hundred mean well three over a hundred means you're growing slower than me because you have three times n squared i have a hundred times n squared cha-ching my algorithm's growing faster than yours. So actually, remember, this is a game of golf. We want the smallest one, which would be the three. But just like the race car example, just like the race car example, if I can drop this squared off of mine, then, hey, I'm, I'm going to win as far as golf's concerned. If we're racing cars, you're going to dominate. But in terms of algorithms, we want those fastest running algorithms. So I'm going to win if I can get that squared off, which means I would be in a different fraternity, different order. We talked about that. So all this work we just did proved that, hey, yeah, your algorithm's running faster than mine. Okay, you got three, I got 100. But the main thing we need to notice here is that we're both in the same club. We're both in the same fraternity. We're both in the same order. I'm going to say big O for order. What order are we in? What club are we in? We're both in the N squared club. So to be honest, as far as algorithms concerned, we don't care about the three. We don't care about the hundred. We care about the order. In this case, we're both in the same order, the n squared. Next video, I'm going to show you some graphs and comparison things, help you see this uh, more clearly. But since we're both in the same order, like we can use your algorithm or my algorithm. It's chump change as far as large data sets are concerned. Yeah, your algorithm is growing slower than mine, but if I can find an algorithm that's not necessarily n squared, maybe I can get n or log n or something like that. Get a different fraternity, then that would be better. Anyway, next video, I'm going to graph these, compare them visually, uh, give you more of an intuition of what's going on here.